Welcome to the story time on how I got stabbed in a corn maze. So once upon a time, I went to a corn maze with my friend. We were there for her birthday. It hadn't been Halloween yet. It was October 10th. Can't really remember the year. Anyway, we had gone through the corn maze a couple of times at this point, and they were doing like this weird promotional thing for a choir. Like a bunch of choir students were hired for like a certain amount of time so that all of the earnings that night would go towards their choir trip. I don't know, super weird. There's a part of the corn maze, it's right before the thick of it, so there's a really condensed portion of the hauntedness, I guess that's a good way to put it. So when you're in the middle of the corn maze, there's not a whole lot of haunters, but at the very beginning, there's a whole bunch of haunters. There's strobe lights, there's screaming, there's flashing lights, there's music, just fake blood, fake everything, like your basic typical corn maze if it's haunted. So leading up to that portion of the corn maze where it's not as haunted, there's a really, really small path with like bushes and trees on both sides and then like a swamp area. Right at the very tail end of the haunted condensed portion of it is when this, like where it all happened. So we were not in the middle of the corn maze, luckily. I did not want to go through this third time, but since it was my friend's birthday, she really wanted to go. And I was super tired. I'd been really scared that whole night. So I was like, okay, fine, I'll go through one more time and I'll just try not to be scared. So we were walking through, I was cracking jokes and then we hear snap. And at first I thought it was a tree branch, but there was like a snap and then a scream. And then the strobing light, like the strobe lights were just really making me disoriented. So I had no idea what was happening, but I felt super dizzy. I didn't really feel anything and other than just being kind of dizzy. And then all of a sudden I felt a really warm wetness go down my body, which was my blood. I looked at my hand while the strobe lights were happening because I had no idea what was going on. I didn't know why my hands were wet. And the strobe lights at some point were white. So I was able to see that there was blood on my hands. So I called out for my friend and she came over. She thought that everything was a joke, all silly. I was just trying to prank her because we had been doing that to each other all night long. So she kind of sighed. She's like, okay, let me turn my light on. She turns her light on and she just gasps, okay? And I didn't know what was going on and I could kind of feel the source of where the blood was coming from because it's my, in my arm right here. Warning, it's, if you don't like blood, don't, don't look. So naturally when you go to look at like a cut or something, you kind of want to see what's going on, especially if it's in a weird spot. So she was just grossed out. She was freaking out. I naturally wanted to see what was going on so i ended up turning my arm and since it's right here i didn't know where it was i couldn't really feel it other than the blood i ended up putting my hand inside of my arm and turning it and i didn't realize until i could see it because i had so much adrenaline i could not feel anything other than being dizzy tunnel vision and the blood on my all over my body one of the hunters came over and he was like is everything okay he ended up like getting out of character he took off his like clown mask or whatever he also said that he took his shirt off like a hero and wrapped around my arm but he did not so yeah, I guess I just wanted to save the day. I did not start crying until he told me that I needed stitches. So I couldn't feel anything. I was just super woozy. Again, I know I keep saying that, but he shined the flashlight on my arm and he said, you are going to need stitches, like a lot. And that's when I was crying more out of fear other than crying out of pain. I cried for only a couple of minutes and I, once we turned around, he was guiding us back out of the corn maze. Luckily, it was the very beginning of the corn maze, so it was super easy to navigate our way out. It was just a matter of walking to the, the main entrance everybody broke character like all of the haunters i was crying out of fear they all stopped haunting really like, oh okay and then everybody just followed us back out we got into the light and i saw how much blood i had over me it was covered all the way down my arm was completely red most of my left side and then some of it got on my right side it was just almost head to toe in blood we didn't call the police we didn't call an ambulance i just wanted to call my mom so i had my mom come pick me up went to the hospital um the court had bandaged everything up so when we got to the hospital my mom hadn't seen it and neither had any of the doctors but they could see the blood all over me Take me back to clean me up. They unwrap everything and it immediately just sprays everywhere. So it had sliced my artery. The owner of the corn maze actually came to the hospital with us. So he drove in a separate car and he was saying, we have no idea what happened. Like she heard a snapping sound. So maybe somebody like pulled back a tree branch and it like snapped her. But then the doctor was like, unless it was a sore tree, there is no way it went all the way to her bone slicing her artery. We went back. So I got, I think it was like 200 something stitches. I have no idea. Honestly, it's such a blur to me. We went back to the corn maze during daylight three days later with a police officer and the owner because at this point we had no idea what happened. We went back to the same spot and when I say there was so much blood just trailing, there was so much. And they don't have like just blood, like they don't have like fake blood on the ground. It's only in like the decorations. So that's how we knew it was my blood. That night, so we had still, they had determined that it was like a nail or a tree branch that had gone almost cutting off my arm basically. Um, so that night when we got home, from like the whole shenanigans during daylight at the corn maze, somebody reached out to my brother, who is actually now a really good friend of mine and a really good friend of his, saying, oh, how's your sister? Like, I saw the whole thing. She did not know that she was the only person who saw what happened. 
So she was one of the choir kids hunting that night, and so was he. So he was like 16, 17 at the time. Honestly, no idea. I don't really know about this kid very much. But we went to the same school. So he had decided to dress up as the Joker, so lovely killer clown, and was fully aware of the rules not to bring knives. So the corn mice told him no, and his parents, he ended up asking his parents if he could bring his knives, and they said no. From my understanding, it was a really, really big knife like a machete, but I'm not sure if it was actually a machete or not. I have no idea. What had happened is he was hiding in the bushes while I was passing. So he was doing his job, so that's not the problem. The problem is when he jumped out, he knew how close he was. They say it's an accident. I don't know if I believe that. He had jumped out of the bushes with his hands like this, with the knives in his hands, okay? And it had slashed me. But the reason it was so deep, it's because it went in and then it went down. And I remember facing him right after everything had happened and I was confused and dizzy and full of blood. I remember standing face to face with him and he looked me in the eyes and looked like he was scared and then immediately ran off. Just for reference, this is what my cut looked like after stitches. This is gross, just be warned. Anyway, after we found out what had happened and who did it, the police showed up to the kid's door. He opened and immediately started crying. We ended up having a court hearing pretty soon after the whole incident happened. And that's where they sentenced him to like five days of juvenile detention and just a buttload of community service. I forgot to mention that when the police showed up at his house, they found the knife with my blood all over it. And there wasn't blood on his other knives. So he knew. We then started our active lawsuit against him. Jumping back to the video that originally went viral about this, how he asked for my number two years later, that was not a joke. We were at this church event, and he happened to be there, and I was there. It was like a big church event. So this kid had only seen me twice in person before this. Once when I got stabbed, and the second time when we had a court hearing. But I guess he didn't recognize me. I remember seeing him and just standing still. Like, he had looked me down a couple of times and it looked like he was about to approach me, but I had completely avoided it. And this kid was a tall kid compared to me. He towered over me. And I just remember his eyes piercing into my soul a couple of times when he was trying to talk to me, but I avoided it. Eventually, he came up to me. This was like within two minutes of me just trying to get away from him. Before anyone says, oh, you should have just left. I didn't drive. I didn't drive there, so I couldn't really leave. It was this like church dance thing that they have for youth. So you just kind of go and dance with a bunch of people. He asked me to dance. And I was so frozen in fear that I didn't really say anything. I just kind of stood there and he ended up grabbing my hand anyway. He then started asking questions about my personal life, which I thought was so strange. I was just sitting there like, how do you not recognize the person you almost killed? Like I would, if you accidentally did it, don't you think you would have a lifetime full of guilt and shame and that person's face would be burned in the back of your mind? Luckily, I kind of broke free from his dancing and I just, I was just in so much shock. He said to me, you look so familiar. Can I get your number? I just looked at him and I said, I look familiar because I'm in active lawsuit against you for the time you stabbed me. And then I just walked away. So anyway, there was a lot of confusion with the lawsuit. A lot of suing, a lot of counter suing. And this thing went on for five years. Five and a half, almost six, honestly. There were some people that were on his side, so the kid that stabbed me, that were saying I shouldn't get anything because it had been ruled as an accident and he was still a minor. So what's weird about how I didn't feel the stab during is I feel the stab more now than I do when it actually happened. I get phantom pains all the time. Every single time I talk about it, even if I think about it or if it's just I'm not even thinking about it, 
I can feel myself getting stabbed more than I did when I actually got stabbed, if that makes sense. And I don't really have a fear of corn mazes, surprisingly. I mostly have PTSD from knives. So if anyone's holding a knife, I can't. It just freaks me out and I can I can really feel phantom pains then.